Today, I'm gonna to be introducing you guys to the world of nano manufacturing. And I'm gonna be bringing it all to you guys today on the Torno Swiss Nano. Not too hard to see how they got that name, is it? So these screws are made up from a really tiny bar stock that's only an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters in diameter. And you can actually see when I pull it out right here, how tiny this bar stock really is. Right here in this bottom channel, this is the bar that's actually running. And as it keeps making parts, the bar gets shorter and shorter and shorter until it gets to the end. It'll then pull that remnant back, unload it, rotate this drum, and load a new bar into the main spindle. So let's go up to the main spindle. So up in the main spindle area right here, you can see our little bar that's going through the bar feeder into the main collet. Now the main collet grabs the bar and the Z-axis moves the bar. So this is what you're seeing actually drive the bar in and out of the guide bushing and the machining footage. It's just a snug fit around the bar so the bar can't go anywhere when you cut it. In the machining area where I make the part, the process is very standard. The first thing I do is I come in and I rough face off and I rough turn the part. And then I come in with a tool from Horn that has a zero radius on it. It has like an eight thou wiper. And I wanted to use this to take a very skim cut to get the prettiest looking part possible. Now you're gonna be seeing a lot of Horn's tools on our channel coming up in the future here. And that's because when it comes to the small tools game, Horn is like the king of the industry. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, in our next video, we're gonna be doing an 8,000s boring bar. Like you almost need my finger in front of it to see that. So yeah, they make a lot of crazy small tools. We're gonna be showing you guys all of them. So after that I come in and I single point thread the part at 4,000 RPM and I gotta say I was pretty impressed with how good this machine picked up the lead perfectly of the screw and made an absolutely gorgeous looking thread. I really was impressed with that. And I want to give a huge shout out to Hardin for getting us all the collets and guy bushings for this machine. Seriously guys, thank you so much. We got up and running super quick because of you. Much appreciated. So after all the machining's done on the main, I come up with my counter spindle and I grab the part and I cut it off. And this is another shout out I really want to give the horn. They make a really nice left-handed cutoff tool that is as close to the main spindle as possible. So now I can get as close to the cutoff tool as possible and not have to use an extended nose collet. So that's a super nifty tool right there. I would definitely recommend that if you're getting into small machining like this. When it comes to stuff like that, horn really is the best. So that's why we put them in our machine. After the counter spindle grabs the part, I then cut it off. The counter spindle goes home and then I face the part off and I blend the top of the head of the screw so that way when I come in and I slit it with the slitting saw, I can come back in with my turning tool and I can reface that off and go around the top of the part again to make it so I can clean up the burrs. This part is made out of 316 stainless steel. I wildly regret choosing that material, but it is kind of a pain with the burrs so I had to go over a lot of things twice in order to make it so it was a burr free part. And I am actually really blown away that this tool doesn't break. It is extremely thin. I could grab this and easily break it off with my finger. And the fact that it cuts stainless steel no problem just absolutely blows my mind. After the part's complete, this is one of my favorite parts about this machine, is there's actually a vacuum system. So once the part's complete, this counter spindle comes up to the vacuum system, and this air will actually pull the part right out of the counter spindle. So all you have to do is open up the collet, and then it sucks it right out into the vacuum system. And then those parts come down to a little tray right here. Yep. And this is where your parts come out to. Oh, look at that, I got a couple little screws in there. feature in this machine is the way these live tools can be adjusted and spaced out. So I'm going to take it apart and show you how it works because I think it's pretty cool. But before we get into that, safety first. I'm popping this little cover off. You take this off and now you can kind of see a little bit more. Which by the way, Tornos, nice product placement. I like your style. It's pretty cool. So in here you can see the electrical motor that drives the live tools, right? You can see it as a belt that connects to these live tools. 
Now, what's kind of important to note here is that you can put all sorts of different live tools in here. So they give you an assortment of belts. So you could change out the belts so all the tools are being driven. Once you've cracked those two screws loose, now you can move the motor. And this is what's gonna allow us to take the belt off and get the live tools off. I really wanna show you guys the way Tornal shims their live tools. It's very unique, it's very cool. I actually think it's really awesome. Let's pop all these out. So in my opinion, the reason why this is a big deal is because with Swiss machining, you have a problem with using a guide bushing. And that is if you have to do multiple operations on like a shaft or any kind of part, you have to choose your blend points. And your blend points are based off how long the bearing surface is inside your guide bushing, okay? So if your guide bushing only has 800 thousandths of support, typically you don't wanna turn much longer than that because when you suck back, you won't be supporting the part anymore. But sometimes if you just had a little bit more reach with your live tool, you wouldn't have to do that. You wouldn't have to blend and you wouldn't have to deal with all those issues. So they avoided that with this right here. So check this out. These shims can go underneath the live tool, right? So you can see there's different thicknesses and you can stack up a bunch of these and there's all sorts of different sizes, right? This is about half the shims that come with the holder. So I can make my holder stick further out or make it closer to my guide bushing by adjusting these shims. This is a very unique feature, at least in, I, I've never seen another Swiss machine that allows you to adjust this, you are going to run into this issue. So again, that is an amazing design by Tornos in my opinion. They made it so you can adjust where your live tool is. I think that's pretty cool. So here's a couple more different holders that you can put on the plate of the Nano. Again, I think it's really cool the machine is this easily buildable. Like you have so many different options as far as what holders you can put where. And then of course you have different belts depending on where that holder sits in space, right? So it's definitely a unique design. It's pretty cool in my opinion. I really like how they did this. It kind of just gives you flexibility that you don't really get on a lot of other machines. Well, other Swiss machines. I gotta say too, I'm pretty impressed. This is a 10,000 RPM live tool motor. That is really good. When, when Swiss machines only have like 6,000 RPM on their live tools and you're doing small work like this, it's almost useless. You really need those higher RPMs to do tiny, tiny stuff. So again, that's another cool thing about the machine. That's just your live tools I changed out right there. But what's really cool about all these Tornos machines is that all of these holders can be changed out. There is no standard setup, right? Like you can pretty much make this all turning tools. You could add all sorts of milling tools. This right here, your live tooling on your counter spindle side is all interchangeable. It really is impressive to me how versatile this thing really is. And the cherry on top, what makes it even better is that all these different holders positions are known in the Tornos control. So it doesn't matter what setup you do or anything like that, you throw these holders in and their positions are known. These are pinned holders, so they're like extremely close to being perfect when you throw them in. So this can like really dramatically reduce your setup time, right? Instead of putting a holder in it like this and locating all these pockets, I just put this holder in, these two pins locate it, all the positions are known. I mean, you really can't get much easier than that. So let's say we want to put this tool holder in underneath our sub spindle and have all these tool positions automatically updated. It's actually really easy. You just hit custom and go to your TMI screen. And normally when you come up to your TMI screen, you're gonna be at this screen right here where it has all the different pages. You go down to your tools manager, you hit input, and you go over to the right fixturing point, which in this case is 31. And you can see I already have the two high frequency spindle and the one 16 millimeter diameter shank. That's what's in there now, right? But I'm gonna delete that and put this in the machine. So let's do that. I'm gonna hit delete, delete holder, yes. All right, so now on fixture point 31, I hit input, and I can see this part number right here is 312022. So I hit input on that, and then right here I can add all the tools. And I usually go with whatever Tornos recommends. You can actually label these tools whatever you want. I don't recommend doing that at all. If you have any problems with your machine, and you call someone from Tornos and you have all these wacky tool numbers, you're just gonna make it confusing for everybody. So just go with a recommended number and I don't know, keep it simple. So I'm just gonna hit input on that, Input on that, input on that, input on that. And what's actually cool about this particular holder is, is they have all the tool station numbers already put on the holder for you. But even going above and beyond, which I think this is like wildly by far the most effort I have ever seen on a tool holder ever, they located and measured all the tool positions and put the exact numbers on the side of this. That is like overachieving to the max, in my opinion. The fact that they would, down to the micron, put all the different holder locations from center and from left to right on where these positions are. I have never seen anyone else bother to do that in their machines. 
I've been really impressed with like the level of detail and craftsmanship in the Nano. All the tool holders positions are already known in here. So really the setup, if you're gonna change everything around is as simple as I think you could possibly get it. Now I kinda wanna go into the programming. Again, it's extremely simple. And I wanna show you guys how Tornos, with their Tysis software, makes this as easy as possible. I, this is really impressive. So you definitely wanna stick around for this part. So if you go up to file, you open a new part, it's gonna ask you what kind of machine you want, right? So here I have like the Swiss GT picked out, Swiss GT32, English standard. There's also the turbo process, which is another thing we have to make a video on one day. But anywho, you hit standard, create. And what's kind of cool, there's a couple things I wanna show you, right? So you have, if you go to your part information, and let's say I tell this the bar diameter is two inches, right? I say the part length is 3.4 inches, okay? When I go to the, uh, the addition tab, which is the actual program, it's automatically updating these macros right out of the menus, which is really convenient. But one thing that's cool is, is it catches stupid mistakes. You might have noticed that I said my bar diameter was two inches. Well, it's a 32 millimeter machine, which is around one inch and a quarter. So if I click on this and I go down here to my errors, it actually shows me incorrect parameter value over here on my G800 line. And it's like, oh, okay, it doesn't like that I put too big of a bar diameter in there. So I can backspace, put one inch, something that'll work, and the alarm goes away. So it catches little things like that. But most importantly, what I wanna show you here is look how much of the program is already written for me. All of the staging, sequencing kind of stuff in the program is done, right? So the, the bar change stuff, the pickoff is done, the subspindle eject is done, the subspindle pickup is done. It's all in here already. All you really need to do is come into here where it says machining and add your tool paths. Now that might still sound like a lot of work, but it's, 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 it's nice though, because a lot of times when people struggle with multi-channel programming, it's because of sync codes, weight codes, just weird little tricks that you have to know when writing this all out longhand. So it's really nice that right out of the gate, I can have a template that's already this close to being right. I really love this. If you are considering getting a Swiss machine and you're making the right choice by getting a Tornos, you need to make the even better choice and get Tysis software because it is just unbelievable how much it makes the learning curve shorter for learning the Tornos machines. I really got to hand it to them. Compared to other companies, Tornos, in my opinion, has the best format for their programs because it's the same across every single machine. But you know, we get a new machine on our floor. All I had to do is go into Tysis, open up a new file, and just add my cutting parameters. It really wasn't that hard to get up and running on this. I think that's really, really cool how they do things. If you could program a GT32, you can 100% program a DT26, a Swiss Nano, it doesn't matter. They use like 99.9% .9 the same codes. <laughs> now back to the machine. Well, that's it for our video today, guys. It is honestly so cool to finally show you the Nano. I love this machine. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like, subscribe, and ring that notifications bell so you can get updates when videos like this come out. See ya. I have the nicest Tysis license that tightens a CNC. The nicest Tysis license that tightens a CNC. Say that 10 times fast. And then get back to work. <laughs>